Looking at those shots, it's really hard to believe that this currently thriving area in South Africa was once dedicated to cattle and pineapple farms with almost no biodiversity and wildlife. The wildlife and their habitat had previously been devastated by human activities leading to many of the species disappearing. Pinda was established in collaboration with the local Zulu tribal community to rehabilitate the ecosystem, allowing for the return of the wildlife that had once flourished this area. Pinda is local Zulu word for return. Animals were brought in from other regions of Southern Africa to establish new populations in the conservancy. There is a lot of doom and gloom stories about biodiversity. Sometimes it is really easy to feel that conservation is a pointless exercise and there is nothing that we can do to help. However, this story is a hopeful one. Pinda is a modern success conservation story. So stick around to see how they managed to do it. And learn stories of people and volunteers that spend their days at the reserve, managing wildlife, doing research, Research and protecting those animals and this fragile ecosystem. You might even see a pangolin if you're patient. I think the key to the success for Pinda is the fact that they've used this ecotourism model to benefit um, not only the reserve itself but also the local communities surrounding them. A lot of work goes into managing 30,000 hectares. Making sure that animals are healthy, that they're reproducing, but not in breeding. That herbivores do not overgraze the land. That territorial animals have enough space and do not compete between each other. That invasive species of plants are under control. That the area is well protected by anti-poaching units. And that is all while still running lodges and operating tourism and volunteerism in the area that bring much needed funding towards conservation. I think the success has been maintaining the relationship with all the key, key role players um, and more importantly creating a, a financially viable business because without you know the tourism and making sure you know people coming here to stay and visiting the park the model can't exist you know the, that's the driver of this model. The biggest number of giraffes I've ever seen in my life. So happy right now. Giraffes are my favorite animals because they're so weird. I just can really relate to them. <laughs> Animal populations in Pinda are thriving. From an initial population of just 30 white rhinos, Pinda now has one of the largest white rhino populations in Africa and have been relocating and repopulating rhinos to other reserves and countries due to their success at protecting them. This has also facilitated what we call rhinos without borders. So where our white rhinos have been translocated to Botswana to start up a founding population there. Pinda is the first private game reserve ever to be a part of the Black Rhino Range Expansion Project. So this is a project together with WWF. The cheetah population here has grown so successfully that some individuals were relocated to other parts of Southern Africa to establish healthy cheetah populations there. Cheetah alone, um, Pinda and the Munyawana is currently seen as one of the most important cheetah metapopulations throughout Southern Africa. Okay, are you ready for this? Pinda has been chosen as a release site for pangolins that have been confiscated from poachers and saved from the illegal wildlife trade. The pangolin is arguably the most trafficked animal on earth, leading to their disappearance in the world. So pangolins were reintroduced here in June 2019 
Before that, pangolins have been completely extinct from the reserve. Over time, these animals have now established home ranges, territories, and thankfully have even had pups. And arguably the cutest. Please leave a comment if you think that there is any animal that is cuter than a pangolin. It is also an educational ground. Numerous researches occur here every year. Very get-go, a lot of data has been collected and that has resulted in numerous PhDs, master's projects, also suitable protocols being out there on what's the right way for soft-releasing lions into new areas. I have spent here a few weeks volunteering with African Conservation Experience, participating in all the daily tasks needed for animal management and conservation like monitoring, data collection, updating ID profiles of animals, tracking, using some of the most modern technologies, trying to understand. So what is the reason of this overwhelming conservation success? Is it the modern technology and their ability to use camera traps, telemetry, satellites, drones, acoustic sensors, a variety of apps for data collection and analysis? But this project is neat because our cameras are actually tools and what we're doing is collecting data that's going to help us identify these individuals in the wild at a later date. Is it their ability to utilize conservation tourism and volunteerism to fund these projects? Around the world, many protected areas are underfunded, allowing visitors to observe exciting and important conservation tasks provides additional source of funding for necessary management activities such as ecosystem monitoring, anti-poaching patrols, invasive species eradication, and environmental educational programs. So we finally found uh, the group of elephants that we were trying to find for the last four days. We couldn't find them. So now we are going to take photos of their profiles for uh, to update their um, identification kits. Or is it their ability to bring people and community together and show locals economic benefits of ecotourism instead of using the same land for farming, agriculture or logging? You smell amazing! I love smelling bushes! When people connect with nature during their travels, when they see firsthand how hard it is to protect our nature and what goes into it, it can lead them into being more appreciative and become more invested in protecting it. Of course, it is all of the above and more. This project truly exists due to the exceptional management and the work of numerous passionate people that spend hours and days in the bush, making sure that the area is thriving while educating tourists and visitors and conducting research that helps other organizations and reserves to obtain this success as well. This is my first time being so close to a lion. I just touched his huge paws and saw his face up close. Seeing their movement data, how long it's taken them to settle in this reserve will be useful for other reserves who want to do the same thing. I hope that this success story got you inspired and serves as a hopeful reminder. When we invest in wildlife conservation, wildlife wins. When people start seeing the benefit of having tourism in the area, um, they are more inclined to wanting to keep the area wild and they also support these new um, ventures that are being undertaken. We want to use tourism to expand you know, conservation areas and not just expand but to ensure that it sustains itself. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end and thank you so much for your interest in those important and exciting topics. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we have so much more exciting conservation, environmental and nature connecting content coming out just for you. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next week. Bye! Man.
manhandled the region enough. Okay. I'm done. <laughs>